bring the power to our country's security as energy in uh, division city initiatives. So today I like to give a talk on the concern effects of my spiritual phase for building the education of enhancement responsibility and climate uh, adaptability. So uh, the energy phase here I focus mainly on the non-domestic buildings uh, using the campus uh, Cambridge building. Campus building as a <clears throat> so today I'd like to share with uh research from only five parts. The first first part is the background. So the UK government has committed to the carbon zero by this uh, fifteen and uh, uh, it also really the first uh the emission by reducing the seventy percent uh, seventy Eight percent greenhouse gas by twenty thirty-five compared with the level uh, in nineteen nineties. So the heat pump does it can utilize the uh, energy from the air, water, and ground depends what type of the heat pump you use. So it can uh, provide the useful heat with one third or one fifth of the electricity by the conventional electric equipment, uh, just like to use the electric heaters uh, to direct for heating. So compared with uh, uh, gas driven boilers, it can also have a significant carbon emission as well as uh, improved energy efficiency. So uh, the left figure shows a comparison between the uh, natural gas boiler and the left heat pumps. So it's a uh, uh, average value and then so uh, the y-axis is the relative carbon emissions compared with the gas boilers. So you can compare with the uh, light bulb and the dark bulb one. Uh, is the year in 2010 or uh, light bulb one and uh, or dark bulb one is in uh, performance in 2021. So uh, due to the improvement of energy efficiency of the department as well as the uh, uh, the, the power uh, generation uh, due to the involvement of the renewable energy systems. So, uh, compare. Uh, so you can see the comparison. So over the uh, last ten years, the key pumps uh, energy uh, carbon dioxide emissions has been reduced by ten uh, fifty percent compared with uh, the value in twenty ten. And uh, it's expected that in 2030, uh, this value can be uh, further reduced to 70 to 18. And the large figure shows uh, the government around the world has uh, sent different incentives to, uh, to pop popularize the heat pumps and the increase the penetration of heat pumps in buildings. So uh, from the right figure, you can see for the European, uh, European Union, the uh, heat pump sales in 2021 has increased around 35% uh, compared with that level in 2020. And for the UK government, we also released a, a policy such like the uh, uh, gas boilers after the skin to uh, encourage the uh, user, users to uh, use more um, heat pumps. So, uh, there is some. Um, so, just the turn back on. So, it's literally in 2010, heat pumps were substantially worse than gas boilers almost everywhere in the world yeah. in terms of their um, carbon emission. Due to the uh, lower efficiency of the yeah. heat pumps, and also another reason is that the uh, power generation system well, don't use that much. Yeah. Um, so now the power generation is decarbonized. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, just wanted to check the <coughs> So, <coughs> so <coughs> on the domestic buildings with no uh, thermal efficiency, uh, fully replace the gas boilers with the SOC pumps will face two uh, challenges. The one challenge is that the radiator needs to be upgraded 
because the existing video was designed for the gas particles, no, no rigid uh, design has to supply water temperature around 75 uh, degrees C, while for the types of heat pumps recommended by government standards is normally no more than 75 uh, degrees. So we need to upgrade the radiators in order to uh, to utilize the health of the house. So according to the estimation, uh, there is a two times uh, sizing size of the required by the radiators compared with that the existing one due to low delta T. And then the uh, installation cost may be one third of compared with that installing the air source uh, heat pumps. Another uh, measures we should conduct is to do the thermal insulation. That is to reduce the uh, thermal load uh, of the buildings. So we don't need to provide so much heating to the buildings. However, this cost is around 30, uh, 70% cost of installing the air source heat pumps. So you can see, the cost of upgrading radiator and the uh, insulation is quite protective. Uh, that uh, we are prevent our uh, promotion of air source heat pumps. So, uh, alternatively, we can use the hybrid operation of the air source heat pump and gas boilers. We also call it a hybrid system. So, with this system, uh, we don't need to modify. The envelope and the radiators. And for the normal conditions, the air source heat pumps can provide the heating, uh, the heating demand under parallel conditions, while only uh, some in some conditions such as the extreme cold uh, weather. So the gas oil will be activated to top up the heating. So this uh, this type of system can also provide enhanced energy flexibility because the uh, air source pump use the, use the uh, electricity so he can participate in the smart grid. So he can also uh, provide uh, uh, flexibility through switching between the air source pump and the gas boilers. I will talk a bit later. So uh, in terms of the energy flexibility of air source pump, so the posture uh, issue I like to mention is that uh, for the current grid, we need to always keep the balance between the demand side and the supply side. Uh, let's say that their, the deviation should be lower than 0.2%. Uh, compared with the difference between the demand required uh, electricity and the supply electricity. So uh, in the previous uh, work, Many uh, researchers may focus at the demand uh, supply side, but, but currently, due to the uh, involvement and IoT devices or smart meters in demand buildings, so the buildings can, can play an important role in the demand side, that is to provide the demand response uh, services to the smart grid. So the demand response is actually a change in the electricity consumption by consumers like the buildings to help uh, keep the supply and demand uh, of the electricity in balance. So it has significant uh, advantages such as you can lower the electricity cost uh, by reducing the energy cost as well as get the revenue from smart grids. And uh, the second one is can achieve a more reliable grid because the uh, it can have to balance between the demand and the supply side. The third one is that we can lower the whole uh, sale market prices as the involvement demand side can reduce the uh, generation or supply or keep the, uh, the whole system to be uh, to be uh, reliable, to be have a higher reliability. So the fourth one, uh, the last uh, advantage is that we can accelerate the energy transition. As we know, in the current power system, more and more renewable energy system will be uh, penetrated to the smart grid, and then it will cause some uh, unreliability issues. So, with the uh, these pumps, it can have more renewable energy system to 
呃 penetrate into the power wheel. So the and also heat pump is uh, a major use to provide heat and provide a significant amount of flexibility as the uh, heating system normally uh, accounts for a large percent of the total energy use in buildings. So the, the air also heat pump actually can provide two kind two types of uh, uh, services like the energy services and the ancillary services. The, the main purpose of the energy services is to reduce the energy cost uh, from the, of the users. For instance, you can see the right figure. Um, during the uh, terrified, high terrified period of on, or on the peak uh, demand, so the energy price is very high. So you can just uh, uh, shift uh, the usage of LSO, from the LSOT pump to the gas boilers if the gas price is lower. So this is called the energy harboring services. Uh, another uh, services we can provide is the energy shifting uh, services, services with the and thermal storage systems. So uh, this service, uh, so apart from energy services, uh, the aerosol heat pump can also provide ancillary services. Uh, and then these services is uh, services to uh, support the transition transmission of the electric power from generator to customers. So the buildings can involved in this scheme get revenue from the uh, smart grid or the system operators. Uh, the right figure shows a comparison of European system operators and the uh, US operators. So uh, in general. In general, the uh, European uh, system operator can provide will have all types of ancillary services that we, such as the frequency contaminant uh, self reserve. We, we also call it the first uh, primary reserve. And the second one is the uh, automatic uh, frequency uh, installation reserve. It's also called secondary reserve. The third one is the manually frequency isolation reserve, or call it the tertiary uh, reserve services. The last one is the replacement reserve uh, services. So it's categorized according to the response speed uh, to the smart grids. So you can see from the right figure the uh, response speed will vary between uh, five seconds to longer than uh, 30 minutes. So when compared with the European uh, operators and uh, the US operator, you can find that there's an overlay. Uh, the for the uh, frequency contaminant reserve uh, in European in European countries, uh, which can include uh, the services like uh, the frequency regulation and the regulation reserve in US, and uh, the for the secondary are the of core automatic frequency installation reserve, we also propose the uh, load boring services as well as paying reserve services uh, named in the US uh, operator. So uh, there's some um, there's two challenges we need to build in to uh, consider the top up uh, the add-on solution of the also hit onto the existing gas boilers. The first uh, challenge is that there is uncertainties around the uh, existing buildings. Uh, so, uh, even the well-designed uh, or the building uh, information uh, should have some deviation in this area operation, such as uh, if we design currently, we need to consider the impact of climate change and so demand due to uh, the equipment degradation or the uh, occupant behavior, energy policies and the equipment uh, performance degradations. So uh, with the considering the uh, uncertainties, we can uh, get the system more robust compared with that without consider uncertainties. The other, another one is that we should, uh, how to involve or how to consider the energy flexibility into consideration 
especially in a uh, joint uh, electricity markets, we need to provide such as energy services and ancillary services in the grid. So when providing such a uh, service, we need to consider it uh, more on the capacity of LSOC pumps. Therefore, uh, this uh, research uh, many many to address the uh, foreign research plan. First one is that there is lack of study on the which will be done for the LSOC heat pumps and uh, enabling the hybrid operation between the heat pumps and the electric boilers. So uh, the second one is that uh, due to the impact of multiple certain sources such as the rare demand performance uh, current factors in future scenarios. So how to consider such uh, impacts? The third one is that hybrid system should also uh, um, have more opportunity to participate in the joint electricity market by providing utility services. Therefore, uh, this study plans to develop the uh, uncertain best alternative retrofit design method for the LSO heat pumps as a solution uh, to the existing gas water system and considering the hybrid, the hybrid operation by taking account the energy flexibility as well as the impact of climate change in the consideration. So uh, this slide shows the overall structure of the proposed method. It may, uh, may consider two parts. The first part is the uncertainty qualification. Here we're considering uh, four types of, of the uncertainty such as the uh, future value, uh, probability, demand, economic factors, uh, such as the energy prices may change and also the inflation rate and the discount rate may change in the future. And therefore, the last one is the component component variation. This is to consider the cost per agent of the uh, heat pumps as well as the gas boilers. So, with uh, taking this uh, different uh, uncertainty uh, sources into consideration, we then conduct uh, to the optimization to uh, get the optimal configuration of the required LSOC pumps for the uh, hybrid systems. So in the first step, we developed uh, uh, probability of weather models to forecast the future weather data and by combining the advantage of the existing global climate models. And we also propose uh, automatic calibration building models based on the forecast weather data in order to get the future uh, building heat, heating demand. The main purpose of the auto calibration is that we can use the existing data, such as uh, for the retrofit case, we have already, already got some heating demand from the buildings. So we can use such data to calibrate our building model to be fit more, uh, to fit more in the real uh, situation. So the optimization objective is to minimize the life cycle cost, which includes the capital cost, operation cost, including the electricity and the gas uh, consumption, <coughs> uh, if we're using a hybrid mode, and as well as the carbon cost. So the operating cost of here we consider the net electricity coding, uh, trading and the gas cost. <coughs> net electricity trading we considering the uh, energy products and the result the revenue products. So we sent two constraints to consider the energy flexibility, such like the foster efficiency is the, the foster uh, constraint equation. We consider that the loss capacity capacity, um, this is the energy product. The primary is the capacity, and secondary is the capacity. At each time step, should not be higher than the rated capacity of the LCT pump. And uh, in the second function, we will consider that the total reserve uh, capacity should not exceed the baseline power of LCT pumps. So here is a case study we used to uh, engineering build buildings in example. So the three gas boilers with a total heat <coughs> capacity of around uh, 6,000 kilowatt hour for served all three buildings. 
So uh, they, they, they were, uh, the heating was trying, uh, transported through uh, shared networks. So here, uh, the Raspberry Pi chips the existing configuration. So we always consider how to provide the X O and also heat pump uh, solution to the existing X O uh, com uh, configuration. So the radiator here is designed at uh, 75 degrees C and 65 degrees C for the return uh, for the, uh, water flow and the return flow uh, temperature. Uh, respectively. Uh, so, uh, by cons so before the retrofit design to select the proper uh, size of the air source heat pump, we need to uh, quantify the future uh, weather. Uh, here, we, we propose a probability uh, global climate model, which utilizes the existing gl global climate models, but take the advantage of them. So this figure shows the gloomy square arrow and the uh, prediction interval coverage prob probability. So this, this term is used to show uh, how, how much percentage of the uh, death, death point is located or is within the predict interval. So uh, here it, it can be found that uh, it will only take one global climate model into consideration. The best global climbing model, uh, the blue square arrow, is is uh, 1.57. However, if we combine different global climbing models, it can perform better than using the only one. And uh, uh, with multiple global climbing model, we can able to generate the probabilistic uh, weather data that can be. Uh, can be used as uh, uncertainty sources of the weather. So here we totally consider around uh, uh, 300 and more than 300 uh, from climate model, while only, uh, only uh, 110 uh, global climate model was that as uh, such uh, amount of model can re represent the all possible scenarios as uh, for the uh, weather conditions. So you can see with the increase of the cumulative share of climate, global climate model uh, from the lowest to highest MSE. So uh, the, uh, the prediction interval coverage probability won't change, which means that 30% uh, of the global climate model is left. Uh, is now to represent the uh, climate conditions with satisfactory accuracy. So the up figures use the validation. So we, we use the data between 2015 to 2021 to, to validate the climate models. So you can see almost all the actual monthly mean temperature, uh, which show in the yellow line was allocated at the predict temperature range. So which you can show that the accuracy is uh, satisfactory. And we further use uh, the probability weather model to forecast the uh, future uh, profiles. So it, this is the main results in the next 20 years. So the annual mean uh, air temperature will climb by uh, 0 0.7. Uh, in 2021, uh, from from the uh, in the next uh, 20 years. So this is a rough estimation, as we can know, no, nobody will know what it actually it is. So uh, we'll consider all the possibility of the future climate change into a consideration while doing uh, the future design. So um, uh, and the, the next uh, uh, step is to generate the probability of the future heating loads. Before that, we need to calibrate the current building models uh, using the existing heat demand uh, as we have already got uh, as the building has been run for uh, many years. So we have some data that can be used to, to model, uh, calibrate the building models. 
before the export sensitivity analysis was conducted to select uh, uh, most inflation parameters, then it affects the building demand, uh, such as the heating set point, in, uh, inflation or the inflation rates, uh, the power that uh, the equipment and the density, the light density, and the occupancy gain. So, uh, so rent net date uh, according to the sensitivity results. So we can uh, get use the stepwise calibration, which combine the simulation between senses and the math uh, to uh, calibrate the buildings. So for each step, for each step, we will generate uh, different submodels uh, based on the parameter range of the heating set point. So you can see from the right figure, all the calib calibration, uh, there is a good fitting between the actual heating and uh, the predicted heating loads. Um, uh, CV RSE will be reduced for, from one uh, around the problem. 120% to be uh, 27% uh, based on the stepwise calibration. We calibrate, calibrate the parameters by each uh, step and finally obtain a satisfied model. So this, uh, this uh, accuracy can meet uh, the current standard requirements such as battery. So we, we already use uh, this Calibrating model to generate the future key nodes based on previous uh, forecast uh, weather data. So you can see, uh, due to the impact of global warming, the annual mean heating nodes may decrease by uh, around 56% in the next 20 years. Uh, we further conduct a little bit of minimization based on the forecast weather as well as the uh, uh, predict uh, heating, uh, in increasing heating loads. So we, we conduct the optimization under different number of LSOT bars. And finally, we found that the optimal number of LSOT bars fall with a, each capacity of uh, around 470 kilowatts, uh, kilowatts as the, uh, which is the up limit capacity of the uh, of the manufacturer. So we finally choose uh, for us, we can achieve the minimal uh, life cycle cost as the equation in this figure. So actually the size we select for the LSOT pump is only 60% uh, of the rated capacity of gas boilers. Uh, which means that the LSOT pumps can provide the most heat during the hard load, hard heating load conditions. But, but in the design conditions, such as the extreme cold conditions, uh, we can only use a, a gas boiler or hybrid version of a gas boiler <coughs> and the LSOT pump to provide the heating. Um, and so in order to uh, figure out uh, the operation mode during the next 20 years, so uh, as, as we can see from this figure, we have three modes with, which we can provide to uh, for the heat. The hybrid mode, mode which is we can activate the gas of heat pump as well as the gas boilers to provide the heat and the uh, also Pump mode, mode, which means that only LSOT pump mode, uh, LSOT pump can, can be used, or only the LSOT pump is used to provide heat and the, and the gas boiler mode, which means only gas boilers is used to provide the heating. So this, this mode is usually uh, used when the extreme cold condition because the return water from the buildings may exceed the uh, uh, 75 degrees, which is the um, maximum that also heat pump can provide. So you can see that the only also heat pump mode can account for 77, uh, 78 percentage. So, percent. So, uh, by 
category mode and the gas oil, gas, gas oil mode can account in for the 22%. This can serve a significant uh, carbon emission reduction. So uh, the optimization result can be can also be found from this figure, which compares the, the difference between the original gas boiler system and the retrofit hybrid system. So you can see that during the uh, 20 years, uh, we here we are showing that the layers of the pump outside for these 20 years. So the 46% uh, of life cycle product cost saving can be achieved. If you can see the breakdown of such uh, energy cost uh, uh, savings, it can be found that uh, with the hybrid operation, the carbon cost can be greatly reduced, um, as well as the energy costs, because the LSOP pumps or the hybrid system can enter, can earn revenue from the smart grid. So the revenue is around 10% of the total cost saving. This is uh, because we provide the ancillary services using the LSOT pump. In terms of the carbon reduction, um, the carbon reduction rates of the hybrid system can be uh, uh, can can be reduced by 49% in the to uh, 30% six percent in 2041 this is because uh due to the uh, as the estimation of the green book guidance from the uk government uh due uh, due to the penetration of the renewable energy systems so the electricity emission factors may greatly uh, reduced from uh, from 2022 to 2041 so uh, it will shoot more advantage that utilize the LCC pumps to provide heating in the future. So, uh, most, so the, another issue we concern more is about the electric period. So, we, we simulate around the uh, six, uh, 300 uh, scenarios according to the weather scenario and the heating scenarios. So under different scenarios, we can go to a uh, payback period. So generally, the payback period and different scenarios can vary between uh, 4.5 and uh, 5.4 years with a mean of five years. And also, the LSOT pump can provide the cooling for the buildings. But as recently, there is more concern from the overheating problems in buildings in summer. So the LSOT pump can, so based on the uh, cooling load, uh, it's estimated that the annual mean cooling load can be increased from uh, not around 9.5 kilowatt hour of square meters to 30.6. Based on the building uh, generated from a building model. And uh, the more figure shows that the estimated building maximum cooling load will not exist the design LSOT pump uh, cooling capacity, which means that the design LSOT pump uh, for heating can also meet the future cooling demand. So, this is quite important because the LSOT pump can address the uh, concerns of the mitigation of, of the indoor heat in more insulated buildings. So in the future, more insulated buildings will be involved, which may certainly increase the cooling demand. Uh, in summary, there are three advantages of the hybrid system or hybrid system. The first one is that we can, uh, for, for the society part, it can reduce the loss and carbon uh, carbon reduction. The second one is from the user part, you can earn the revenue by providing auxiliary services uh, utilizing the hybrid heating uh, systems. The second one, uh, the second point is that the large span operating cost can be reduced with the payback period with only uh, around five years. And for our grid side, uh, the grid stability, uh, stability and reliability can be enhanced 
uh, due to first buildings involved in the uh, response scale. So this is the three wins three wins solutions for uh, fabric systems. So finally, I'd like to thank uh, uh, my team's support for this research. Thank you. Thank you.